What's shaking my friends? My name is Shay and today we're going to talk about all the books I'm looking forward to being released in January 2023. Now I've seen multiple people put out their most anticipated of 2023 release videos. Listen, I can't do that. Hopefully in the year of 2023 I can come out with monthly videos of all the books that I am having some interest in that come out that month because there's hundreds of books that come out each month and how can I narrow that down? I can't. So I'm going to go by release date. I'm not going to go over exactly what these books are about, but I will give you some buzzwords, something that made me want to read the book. So here we go. I have my computer down here. I'll be looking at it because I couldn't memorize all of these releases. I think I have about 25, 26 or so. So let's just go ahead and get started. Coming out on January the 3rd, the first book we have, of course, is The Stolen Heir by Holly Black. Now listen, this is in the same world as The Cruel Prince, Elfheim. It follows Jude's younger brother, Oak, who is now grown and 17 years of age. So that is exciting. I don't know the exact plot. I did enjoy The Cruel Prince some. My favorite in the series was The, the Wicked King. That was the, it's somewhere over here. But... I enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't the best thing that was ever written. I didn't read the Book of Night because of course heard horrible things, but I do plan on reading The Stolen Air at some point. Also coming out on January the 3rd is Song of Silver, Flame Like Night by Emily Wen Zhao. And it's Chinese mythology, outlawed magic, and a mysterious mark. Who knows? That intrigues me. Chinese mythology, which I have several books coming out in 2023 that have to do with Chinese mythology. So I am excited that. And then also on January the 3rd, we have Age of Vice by Deep T. Kapoor. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. I apologize. It is Gangsters and Lovers, False Friendships, Forbidden Romance, and the Consequence of Corruption. So I'm down for that. So that's all for January 3rd. January the 10th, I have a load of books that are coming out. So let's just hop right to it. So first coming out on January 10th is The Sapphire Altar by David Dowglish. This is the second in the Vagrant God series. The first book was The Bladed Fate, which I read in the month of December. And this is basically a political revenge story. It follows a prince whose parents have been killed, whose gods have been killed, and a na uh, nation has been conquered by these other people and he is imprisoned by them and he escapes a couple of years later and of course he is going to vow to take revenge and take his country back. So that is the sequel to that story. Then we have another sequel coming out on January the 10th and that's Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is Dark Academia. The first book in the series is Ninth House. I read Ninth House. I I feel like Ninth House was I read in 2021 and I enjoyed it. Maybe I read it in 2022. I think 2021. Um, but I think I would have to maybe reread it to continue on. I'm not sure. But I did enjoy it. So also coming out on the 10th is The Heavenly Sword by Alice Poon. And this is a young adult fantasy. And I it is also a Chinese mythological folklore. It's going to be a duology. Tale of family, love, fellowship, loyalty, loss, sacrifice, and kung fu rivalry. Kung fu, hello, fantasy, I'm into it. Another Chinese myth mythology. Uh, which is very exciting. Also coming in at um, is We Are All So Good at Smiling. Um, the forest holds monsters, fairy tales, and pain that they have both been running from for 11 years. So two individuals. And I don't know, but that just sounds exciting. Also, the cover is gorgeous. Then we have All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham. That is a missing child, and she's desperate to find it years later. I don't know, but it is a mystery thriller, and I don't like to know much about my mystery thriller going into it so but looking forward to that. I didn't read A Flicker in the Dark by her but I am looking forward to reading that soon. Um, then we have Reef Road by Deborah Goodrich Royce and this is when a severed hand washes ashore in the wealthy enclave of Palm Beach, Florida, the lives of two women, a lonely writer obsessed with the unsolved murder of her mother's best friend, and a panicked wife whose husband has disappeared with their children collide as the world shudders in the pandemic lockdown E20. So there are several books that have to do with COVID in this list that are coming out. And so this just, it doesn't appear that it has like 
a, a main plot of COVID, but it does take place in the lockdown. So if that triggers you, do not do not read. Then we have Liar, Dreamer, Thief by Maria Dong. And this is, before he jumps, he slams her with a devastating accusation. His death is all her fault. And that's all we need to know. That is all we need to know. Also on the 10th, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. So this has such a cute cover. And it's a curmudgeonly professor journeys to a small town in the far north to study fairy folklore and discovers dark fae, magic, friendship, and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. So first of all, you got me at curmudgeonly. Uh, yes. Yes, please. Let's read it. Um, then we have The Daughter of Isdenar, sorry if I did not pronounce that right, by Hadir Elsby, and this is two young women, Nahal, a spoiled aristocrat used to getting what she wants, and Georgina, a poor bookshop worker used to having nothing, who find they have far more in common, particularly in their struggle for the rights of women and their ability to fight for it with forbidden elemental magic. So I think this is like a feminist fantasy, and I'm all for it. I'm out for it. Let's go. Still on the 10th, we have City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer. And the thing I wrote down for this is a cowardly girl who finds herself at the center of a criminal syndicate conspiracy in a city where crooked politicians and sinister cult reign and dreaming means waking up as your worst nightmare. So this is a fantasy horror novel and I haven't read a lot of fantasy horror but I'm into it. I'm into it and I can't wait to read it. And then finally on January the 10th we have The Nightmare Man by J.H. Markert and this says a horror novelist writings start to become real. That's all we know. And I think he becomes a suspect and it's a whole bunch of stuff but we're here for it. We're here for it. I wanted to read more horror this year, and uh, there's some great ones out there. I know that I had a bad horror experience. I think I may have been reading the wrong horror. I don't know, uh, but I'm looking forward to trying out some more. Then on January the 14th, we have How to Sell a Haunted House by Hendrix, and as disturbing events stack up in the house, Louise and Mark have to learn that sometimes the only way to break away from the past, sometimes the only way to sell a haunted house is to burn it all. Down. And I think this one also has something to do with the COVID pandemic, like their parents die in the, the COVID pandemic and then they have to go like they inherit the house or something. I'm not sure, but just know that going in. I think it does have something to do with COVID pandemic. Okay, so on January the 17th, we have The Keeper 6 by Kate Elliott. This is world hopping, badass, spell slinging mother who sets out to rescue her kidnapped son from a dragon lord with everything to lose. Okay, first of all, um, badass spell slinging mother. Yes, we don't have enough protagonists in in this 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 right here, um, and also uh, a dragon lord. Yes, yes. Then we have What Lies in the Woods by. Um, Kate Alice Marshall and this says for decades the friends have kept a secret worth killing for but now Olivia wants to tell and Naomi sets out to find out what really happened in the woods no matter how dangerous the truth turns out to be. I feel like she gets assaulted and then she testifies that it was somebody that did it and he went to jail and maybe it's not they weren't telling the truth. So that's exciting. I have not read any Kate Alice Marshall before but I've always been interested in her books but I think it's time to finally read them. Then, uh, finally, on the 17th, we have The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. And this is, Freedom must look good on Gita because other women in the village have started asking for her help to get rid of their own no-good husbands, but not all of them are asking nicely. And I feel like this book, they think that she has killed her husband, but she actually hasn't. And it sounds like it's going to be kind of like a funny funny uh, mystery thriller, maybe. Um, then on January the 19th, we have The Drift by C.J. Tudor. Um, three ordinary people risk everything for a chance at redemption in this audacious, utterly gripping novel of catastrophe and survival at the end of the world. Yes, I love survival novels, catastrophe novels. Love it, love it, and add some thriller in there and I'm all for it. And lastly on the 19th we have God Killer by Hannah Kainer. Um, this is a fantasy. Kiss and kills gods for a living and she enjoys it. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill. So there you go. I The, the cover of God Killer is stunning. Of course I'll pop it up here but it's stunning. Then we have another horror starting out on January the 25th. 
fourth, and that's gonna be All Hallows by Christopher Golden. And three odd children claim that the cunning man is coming for them and they want the local kids to protect them. But with families falling apart and the neighborhood splintered by bitterness, who will save the children of Parma Road? So I'm all down for horror, horror again this year. And that's all I have to say about that. Then we have Spice Road, which is a fantasy by Maya Ibrahim. And one young heroine navigates the treacherous road between protecting the ones you love and staying loyal to the place you call home. So I also like the cover on this one. Um, Retro by Sophie La Puente and Jared Schusterman, which is the son of Neil Schusterman. Um, what starts off as a lighthearted competition to live without modern technology for a year turns into a fight for survival in the, this unputdownable young adult thriller. So, living without technology, fantastic. I love it. Then, uh, finally on the 24th, we have episode 13 by Craig DeLouis. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing any of these names right. So, um, episode 13, a ghost hunting reality TV crew gain unprecedented access to an abandoned and supposedly haunted mansion, which promises a groundbreaking 13th episode. But as they uncover the secret history of the house, they learn that reality TV might be all too real. So another kind of real things are coming in real life. Okay. Um, then on the 31st, we're getting Vampire Weekend by Mike Chen. I've never read anything by Mike Chen, but his works have always really intrigued me. And of course, Vampire. And as a fan uncovers Louise's true identity, things get dangerous, especially when he asks her for the ultimate favor. One that goes beyond just family, one that might just change everything vampires know about life and death forever. And I don't think these vampires are really like the vampires that we see. Like, like I think they just live normal lives. And I guess it sounds like somebody's going to ask her to turn him into a vampire and it's going to gonna get dicey. And then finally... My final book in January is probably my most anticipated out of the entire month, and that's going to come out on January 31st as well. Finlay Donovan Jumps the Gun by El Casimano. And I really don't have to tell you anything about this, but uh, the first book starts with Finlay Donovan. If you don't know what Finlay Donovan is killing it is about, I don't know where you've been, living in Iraq, but... Virtually, it is about this woman who originally in Finlay Donovan is Killing It is overheard pitching a book idea to her agent. The woman sitting next to her and the table next to her thinks that she is talking about killing, that she is an assassin. And so she tries to hire her as an assassin and it's hilarious. It's a mystery thriller. I loved it. I loved both of them. I loved the first one more, but this is the third book in the series. It's coming out on January 31st. So that was a lot of books that I'm looking forward to in January. Will I get to all of them? No, but I'm going to keep up with how people are kind of writing them and reviewing them. And I really want to read a lot of these. So I hope that was helpful. I will have another one coming out for February and hopefully the rest of the year like this. I already have over 100 books that I'm looking forward to in the year of 2023. And that's just the ones that are announced right now. So there's more to come, more announcements to come in the future. And I'm excited. I'm excited. So that's it. I hope you guys are having a great month and I will catch you guys later.